if you find this video useful remember to click like and subscribe and for more information about all our resources and revision courses that we do go to alevelmathsrevision.com so topic number nine on bridging the gap between gcse and a level is going to be on further straight lines and in particular we're going to look at three things we're going to look at the midpoint of a line segment between two points we're going to have a look at perpendicular lines and thirdly we're going to have a look at some general problem solving when it comes to straight lines so let's get right onto it so the midpoint of a line segment between two points so say we were asked to find the midpoint of a line segment a b between two points a two three and b seven two so i think the first thing we can do is draw a semi-accurate diagram so let's say we've got the point a there which is two three well, we can see the x coordinate of b7 will be to the right and the y coordinate will be down a bit because it's minus two so let's say b is there roughly reasonably accurate but still quite rough like that so the line segment that we're talking about is this one here so we want halfway along and halfway up now thinking back to statistics what finds the middle of a set of data is the mean there are other measures of average as well but i'm specifically talking about the mean here well that's what we need to do here we need to find the mean of the two points because the mean of the two points will find the middle so what we need to do is add the x coordinates up divide by how many there are add the y coordinates up divide by how many there are so that's the formula for midpoint so if we do it in this particular case here, we see that the midpoint is simply the x-coordinates added up divided by 2 and the y-coordinates added up 3 plus minus 2 divided by 2 which gives 9 over 2, top heavy fractions are fine in the other maths and 1 half and that's it. So whenever you're asked to find the midpoint now, don't try and visualise it. Don't try and count how many along, how many up, etc. Just find the average of the two, the mean of the two points. Add the x-coordinates up, divide by how many there are. Add the y-coordinates up, divide how, by how many there are. So the next thing I wanted to go through was perpendicular lines. So two lines are perpendicular if, and only if, their two gradients multiply together to make minus one. So, for example, if we add a line with gradient 2, let's call that M1 is the first gradient. Then the second line, to be perpendicular, would have to be a number that times by 2 to make minus 1. So, if we first of all make a number that times us together to make 1, then stick a negative in front of it. So those two lines now, those two gradients, are perpendicular. And notice that what we did, we basically flipped it, found the reciprocal, then attached a negative sign. So two lines are perpendicular if they're gradients, times they get to make minus one. Or another way of writing that is if the gradients are the negative reciprocal of each other. So attach a minus sign, make it negative, then do one over or flip the fraction upside down if it's a fraction to find the reciprocal, the negative reciprocal. So let's do a question that uses everything we've learned so far. So this is the question here. So A is the point 27 and B is the point minus 1, minus 2. My advice is always try and just draw a picture of it. So there's A, which is 27, and B... Well, the x coordinates less, so it's slightly to the left, and the y coordinates less, so it's down. So there's b there. It's the point minus 1, minus 2. Not always necessary to draw a diagram, but I think it massively helps all the time. So it says find the equation which passes through the midpoint of AB. Okay, before I even read any further, I know there's marks to be gained for finding the midpoint of AB. So let's do that. Let's find the midpoint of AB. Now we just learnt that the formula for midpoint is the x-coordinates added together, i.e. the average of the x-coordinates, 
and the y coordinate is the average of the y coordinates added together. So in this case, it's equal to um, 2 and minus 1 over 2, and 7 and minus 2 over 2, which is equal to, so 2 minus 1 is 1 over 2, and 7 minus 2 is 5 over 2. So there's the midpoint found. So find the equation of the line which passes through the midpoint. Well, we've done that bit now. Of AB, which is perpendicular to AB. Well, first of all, we need the gradient of AB. Now we know that the gradient of a line segment from last uh, lesson was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's equal to the y coordinate of B minus the y coordinate of A over the x coordinate of B minus the x coordinate of A, which gives minus 9 over minus 3, which is simply 3. So that's the gradient of this line here. But we want the gradient of the line that goes perpendicular to that. So that line there. So it makes a right angle. Now we know that to find the gradient that's perpendicular, well, AB has gradient 3. The negative reciprocal of 3 must be the perpendicular gradient. So, um, with a little right angle next to it, equals minus 1 third. That times is by 3 to give minus 1. Therefore, the equation of the line y minus, and our point that it needs to pass through, is here. So y minus 5 over 2 equals m x minus 1 half. And that's the equation we used last week for the general equation of a straight line, which is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And when we deal with fraction gradients, it's far easier to use that equation. So the first thing I'm going to do to get rid of the fractions is times everything by 3. So that implies that if I times everything by 3, 3y minus 15 over 2 equals minus 1 x minus 1 half. Now let's just expand this bracket here because there's a minus attached. So that gives me 3y minus 15 over 2 equals minus x, double minus, 1 half. Now let's remember the form that I want the answer in. It wants all the x, y and constant terms on the left hand side where the coefficients a, b and c are integers. Well they're not yet integers, however we can make them integers by either timesing by 2 or taking this half over to the other side, along with that x term there. So let's do that. So we get x plus 3y, take 16 over 2, equals 0. And 16 over 2 is just 8. So x plus 3y minus 8 equals 0. What we could have done, if you didn't notice that it gave you an integer by taking that over to that side, we could times everything by 2, so let's just follow a different route. Let's times everything by 2. So I get 6y minus 15 equals minus 2x plus 1. Let's take everything over the left-hand side. So we get 2x plus 6y minus 16 equals 0. And that's an equally acceptable answer because we fulfilled the conditions of what the question asked us. It didn't say it had to be in its simplest form, in its lowest terms rather. It just said they all need to be integers. So actually, 2000x plus 6000y minus 16000 would also be a stupid but equally acceptable answer. So finally, I want to have a look at a problem solving type question and just show you the value of doing a good diagram when asked a question like this. So a big multi-part question here. Uh, and the first part says, find the gradient of the line L1, which has equation 4x minus 3y plus 5 equals 0. 
and that goes back to what we did in the last bridging the gap session so we need to write it in the form y equals mx plus c so if we take this y over to the other side we get 4x plus 5 equals 3y because we took that 3y over the other side by adding 3y uh, if i write that in a, in a way that makes more sense 3y equals 4x plus 5 making y the subject which arguably it already was but i think it helps to have it on the left hand side and then we can see we just divide by 3 to get y equals and divide everything by 3 4 thirds x plus 5 thirds and we can see there therefore the gradient is the coefficient of x which is 4 thirds so that's that part done so part 2 find an equation of the line L2 which passes through the point 1 2 so let's just write that down point 1 2 which is perpendicular to L1 so the gradient of the perpendicular and the way I denote that is to just do a little right angle next to the M equals and it's the negative reciprocal of the original gradient so the reciprocal would be three quarters the negative reciprocal minus three quarters so now we've got a point and a gradient so we can put it in our equation y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 which is ideal for fractional gradients so we've got y minus and the y coordinate is 2 equals m x minus x1 and rearranging that so I'm going to times everything by 4 to get rid of this fraction here so times in everything by 4 I get 4y minus 8 equals minus 3 x minus 1 and I think it's unhelpful to have that bracket there so I'm going to expand the bracket so 4y minus 8 equals minus 3x double minus 3 so plus 3 and then taking everything over to the other side from the right hand side to the left I get 3x plus 4y minus 11 equals 0 and there I have it it's written in exactly the form they wanted they weren't in that form there and actually it didn't even spell out that a b and c had to be integers this time so I've probably done a little bit too much work but it's still correct I still think it's better to have it as integers so zooming out a little bit so we can see everything on the screen part three the line l1 crosses the x-axis and I'm going to annotate the question as I do this because when it says it crosses the x-axis that's telling me that y equals zero at p and the line l2 crosses the y-axis that means x equals zero at q find the coordinates of the midpoint of p q so this is where I think a good diagram massively helps so the first line let's draw an axis there we go doesn't have to be 100% accurate but it has to be approximately accurate so if I draw the first line which we worked out to be this here this was our first line y was 4 thirds x plus 5 thirds so the y intercept is positive and it's got a positive gradient as well so it looks something like that so I'm going to call that line 1 they call it L1 there we go L1 which has equation y equals and it was 4 thirds x plus 5 thirds line 2 was perpendicular to that and passed through the point 1 2 so roughly like that so let's roughly get that as well like that doesn't have to be 100 percent accurate just as long as it roughly looks the part and there's our right angle so that's the line l2 which is and the equation we've got for that is 3x plus 4y minus 11 equals 0. So it says the line L1 crosses the x-axis at P. So the line L1 crosses the x-axis at P. 
the line L2 crosses the Y axis at Q. There it is there. So now let's find the points P and Q. So P occurs, as we said, on the X axis when Y equals zero. So we're gonna let Y equal zero. And that means the equation L1 gives zero equals four thirds X plus five thirds. Rearranging that, we get four thirds X equals minus five thirds. If we times both sides by three, that gives us four X equals minus five, then divide by four, that means that x equals minus 5 over 4, minus 5 quarters. So let's put that there. So minus 5 quarters on our diagram. Moving on to q. So q happens when x equals 0 on line 2. So that means that line 2 now becomes when x equals 0. 3 lots of 0. plus 4y minus 11 equals 0, which means 4y equals 11, which means that y equals 11 over 4. So let's write that on there, 11 over 4 up there. So what's the midpoint of that? So we've got p has coordinates minus 5 over 4, 0. We have Q has coordinates 0, 11 over 4. And we know the formula for midpoint is equal to the X coordinates added together over 2. And then the Y coordinates added together over 2. Which is equal to minus 5 eighths, 11 over 8. So some complicated numbers here, but at A level you've just got to get used to that. And finally, calculate the length of PQ, given your answer in the form root A over B, where A and B are integers. Well, I think it's better to use a calculator here. In A level, you're allowed to use a calculator on all papers, so as long as you show full working, everything's fine. So, just drawn the roughest of diagrams. So we've got the point P, which is minus 5 over 4, 0. And Q, which has x coordinate 0. So it's to the right of P. And y coordinate 11 over 4. So it's above P. So we've got Q, which is 0, 11 over 4. So it's the length of that line there that we want. Now we can just use Pythagoras on that, like that. We know the length across the bottom is 5 over 4. From minus 5 over 4 to 0 is 5 over 4. And the height of that triangle is 11 over 4, which means that PQ, so the length of PQ, is equal to 5 over 4 squared plus 11 over 4 squared all rooted and let's put that straight in the calculator so 5 over 4 squared plus 11 over 4 squared equals root 146 over 4 So some strange answers there, but this was taken straight from an A-level paper. And we can see that it tallies up. There's all the answers there. Root 146 over 4, minus 5 eighths, 11 eighths. All of those are correct. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to a-levelmathsrevision.com.